If you spin the following spinner twice, what is the probability of spinning L and NP in any order? Hmm. Let's look at these. We're going to spin it once, so the first spin, and we're going to look at the second spin. Uh, I'm going to use a tree model again, even though we could use an area model. So on the first spin, the possible outcomes are P, S, S, and an L. So we do have two S's right here, and that's okay. On the second spin, from the P, you could get either P, S, S, or L. And from the S, the two S's and the L's, the same thing. And now we have all of the outcomes. Well, not the outcomes yet, but let's find them. All right, so here are all of the outcomes. Now this one, asks specifically, uh, what is the probability of spinning an L and a P in any order? Well, <clears throat> we need to find all of the outcomes that have an L and a P. Here's one right here, and here's another one right here. I don't see any other ones, and that's okay. So we have two outcomes out of how many was, was there? A 16. And there we go. No. no. If you write that, you're going to get it wrong because we've got to simplify the fraction one to Wait, one eighth. One out of I got one out of yeah, let's, let's go right here. Oh, so one eighth would be 0 0.125, which is 12.5 a percent. And this one would be the actual answer right here. Now, some of you guys was asking, well, <clears throat> why is this a thing? Not, uh, mm, why is it, um, why is it not one sixteenth? So, right? So, here's the thing is, <clears throat> so we have the probability of, you could either get an L or a P, but then the next one has to be either a P or an L, right? So, this is a little tricky on this one, because you got to think, you got to think really hard. And sometimes that can hurt some people, and I've seen it happen many times. Many people have been injured this way, so be very careful. So we can see that uh, to find how many outcomes there'd be, there'd be four times a fewer, right? Uh, but that's not really what we're looking at, except for it kind of is this way. That doesn't have to make sense. For the first spin, you've got four possible outcomes. And for the second spin, you got four possible outcomes. That's good. The question that happens right now is, for the first spin, I can either get a P, an L, or a P, right? So that's two possible outcomes out of the four. Now, if I had spun one of those, then I can only get one of the other, the other one, so that's only one out of four. When we multiply these, we get two out of 16. Which is what we got. Oh, go team. Bam.